Cascade Hoops Talk, bringing the world NAI basketball one podcast at a time. Morning, Cascade Hoops Talk. Billy D here. Well, happy October. This is when we start basketball. At the end of October, we're playing basketball. I couldn't be happier. Hey, today we're going to have uh, head men's basketball coach at Oregon Tech, Hustlin' Owls, uh, Justin Parnell. Uh, obviously, you guys know I follow this program, uh, but I've gotten to know Justin. He's been at uh, Oregon Tech now. This will be his seventh season. Uh, he's done a great job following up Danny Miles. Really, what a tough job. I mean, Danny Miles, one of the best basketball coaches at any level uh, in the history of the game, won well over 1,000 games. Uh, Justin came in recruited a bunch of guys, made it his own team right away, and uh, now uh, it's Justin Parnell's team, and he's done a great job. You know, this season, Oregon Tech had a 3.62 grade point average. That was best for the best uh, grade point average in AI men's basketball. I have to admit I take special pride in this. I sit on the Oregon Tech Foundation board. Uh, one of the things that we do is the bulk of our endowment money goes to scholarships. We're very proud of our students, and you know, that was a great number to see. Congratulations to Justin and that and that entire team. The Oregon Tech Owls under Parnell, uh, he's won 129 games. He's been there six seasons. One of those was a COVID year. I think they played nine games. Uh, he's won almost 90% of the games played at Danny Miles Court. Uh, he's just done an exceptional job. He lost six seniors this year, to say that real fast. But, you know, he's went out and he's tried to fill the cupboard. He's going to talk about that. So I'm going to shut up and let's listen to uh, Coach Justin Parnell, Oregon Tech Hustling Owls. Cascade Hoops Talk, Billy D here. Hey, I've got uh, head coach Oregon Tech Hustling Owl Basketball, admittedly a program that I, uh, I follow. Justin, thank you very much for uh, being on the program. Hey, Bill. Thanks for having me. Um, doing a great job with this this podcast and everything you do for NAI small college hoop. And then obviously everything you do for, for our program as well. We can't thank you enough. Well, my primary job is to sit behind the bench on the road and drive everybody crazy. That's the primary job, but I do a couple other yeah. things too, but. And you do that well. <laughs> I always tell the guys, you know, where, you know where you can find me. Just turn around. <laughs> yeah. We need you on the road too, especially in places like Idaho and, and Eastern. We need yeah. that. Oh, powerful. And we're going to talk about that weekend here in a minute. But uh, one of the first things I want to talk about, I wanted to get you on early in the uh, podcast season. You know, y- your program had the highest GPA of any men's basketball program in the country. There's a lot of good schools, a lot of good programs. You know, some of it is, you know, a little bit of luck with who you have at the at the time. But boy, you should be very, very proud of, of that achievement. Just talk about what that means to your program into Oregon Tech. I mean, I think it's an incredible accomplishment. I think it means a lot to our our players, our fans, you know, our our school and faculty. We put a big emphasis on you know good students and recruiting. Obviously, the kids, you know, they got to be able to play. But it's one of the first questions we ask, and we're in a unique university where you know you got to be a really good student, and um, if you're not, you're going to struggle, and you're going to struggle in different facets. It in your career and mm-hmm. if, if academics is one thing you know that you can keep in order you're going to be that much better and that much more focused on the floor so we just retry, try to recruit good students uh, we put a big emphasis on it while they're here um, and then also we have tremendous faculty and you know they're not just a number that they check off and they come to class our faculty are in, in regular communication with our athletic department i really do feel like our faculty are as good as they're there is around so we tip our hat off to them because i always say it's really hard to fail at, at oregon tech just because the faculty care about the success of the students so much i'm trying not to say proof in the pudding but that's the only uh, term i can think of you know if you just look at last year's graduates which we'll talk about in a moment garrett albright went to work for fish and wildlife uh, he had his civil engineering degree or uh, environmental in- degree. Harrison Steiger, his civil degree. Uh, Matt Van Tassel, I think he had his master's in civil. I mean, right down the list. And then I think uh, a Lockie had a, a psych degree. But every one of these guys left Oregon Tech with a good job. You're right. They're all working right now. Steiger's actually here finishing one more class. He's going to be an assistant coach for us this year. And you know he'll graduate in civil engineering at the end of the fall. 
uh, Scotty Burge graduated working at a physical therapy clinic and be going to master's, uh, get his master's and his doctorate as well as Lockheed McKim. Yeah, Garrett is full time here in Klamath with the Fish and Wildlife and, and Matt's just doing awesome as a civil engineer in Redmond and, and Kellen Garrick, who was a fantastic student, um, is going back and he's running the family ranch. So all those guys got to play here, won a lot of games, had a great time, and, and now they're all in the careers that they want to be. And at the end of the day, I mean, we want to win ball games and, and compete, but, you know, these guys turned into men, and now they're going to provide for their family and really good jobs and be good members of society. So I think we get wrapped up a lot in the wins and, and the losses. And at the end of the day, when you have a year where, you know, you're number one in the country GPA and all of your seniors graduate and they're in the workforce doing what they want to do, uh, just may as a staff, it makes you feel pretty good and, and makes it, I think that's what, you know, makes it pretty rewarding. You know, it even goes back a couple of years ago. I mean, Seth Erickson now is in pharmacy school. Ty Heeb is working in Portland. I can't remember where he's working now, but he has a really good job. Anyway, all these all these guys end up much better people because they were at Oregon Tech. And that's kind of my next question is there's a, a lot of schools, NAI basketball programs that have strong, strong culture and, you know, do do similar to what Oregon Tech does, grow men versus just going after win. You played at Oregon Tech. You were an All-American there. You knew your new assistant, Mitchell Fink. He played at Oregon Tech, was All-American. He shattered the record book at Oregon Tech. But what is it about Oregon Tech basketball, Oregon Tech as a university in the town? What is it that makes it a special place? You know, the people, it's an incredible place. And I think there's a lot of great places. I think there's a lot of great coaches and great schools and a lot of guys that do things the right way. So I don't want to act like we're the only one, but I'm the one that, you know, we know, and this is the program that we market and, and try to sell. But I just think there's so many good people here. I, I touched on the faculty um, they make this place. Then our administration is, is really strong, um, always has been. And our athletic, athletic department, I think, you know, has just been so successful over the last two years. We have led the conference in the, I believe it's the all sports trophy. And then we've all, at the same time, we've led the conference in the President's Cup, which is the ac academic GPA. And I, mean, I think that's pretty rare where you can be that successful on the court and that successful in the classroom. In our culture, you know, is I hate using the culture buzzword just because everybody uses it, but you know, it's extremely important. I think our guys, we're pretty hands off with them and we try to let them be men and, and figure out things and fail on their own and, um, you know, and come out on the other side better for it. But I think it starts in recruiting that we, we try not to take any chances. Uh, I'm not going to say we, we have it, but we've always had really good kids here, really good coaches. I think one thing that, that we do really well is, you know, we're pretty honest with the kids, and I think every single player knows exactly where they stand, so nothing nothing's a surprise. We check in regularly, you know, and, and I think once you've built it, and I didn't build it, it was built before me by Coach Miles, and we always talk to our seniors about leaving a legacy, so when that next, next group comes in, it's, you know, we just kind of hit the road running. I was actually just talking to – Kobe Blaine at C of I today about some guys that had graduated from his team and our team. And, you know, when you have special leaders, there's not a whole lot you got to do, you know, you, you, in huddles, mm -hmm. they're taking control. And, and that was our, our thing last year is, you know, we didn't shoot the ball extremely well last year and, and we had our deficiencies, but we were so tough and we were pretty together and we had great senior leadership. And, and I can see this group that we have this year kind of going into that same, um, same thing. We talked about the seniors a little bit and their careers, but you know a couple guys you really got to tip their your their your hat to both six year guys, Scotty Burge and uh, Garrett Albright. I mean, Scotty Burge was just Mister Everything, uh, prototypical coach's kid. He wasn't excellent or he wasn't a world beater at any one thing. He just did everything right, and he was uh, gritty. Uh, he just was always seemed to be in the right place at the right time. What talk about what he meant to the program. He just impacted winning so much. You're, you're right. Scotty was an incredible athlete, but there were a couple of things he was pretty elite at. He was an elite ball mover and he was an elite shooter later on in his career. And I just think we get caught up in, you know, talent and athleticism and what guys can do that, you know, may have the wow factor. But I think the ones that really help you are the ones that just impact winning, that make winning plays. You know, they provide great leadership and direction to the young guys. And, and that was Scotty. And this year was the first time me as a head coach has ever coached a practice without Scotty or Garrett. <laughs> all right. And yeah. I got to admit, it was, a, it was a little weird, but um, his legacy is left here. And you can see it 
you know, and some of our, our captains now that, you know, they got Scotty Burge written all over them. And Scotty was just such an important part. Our staff, when we took over, he was one of our first recruits. And, you know, for him to do six years and bring it every day is pretty incredible. We don't talk about it enough. I played four years. I don't think I could have done a fifth. Uh, and he did six. Yeah. And he was the same guy every single day. You know, I was so glad the, as the season was in uh, wrapping up last season, you had that game at Multnomah that the wheels kind of came off. I'm not bringing it up for that reason, but you were able to make a comeback at the end. Frazier hit a big three, and then uh, you ran a, a, a give back play. Anyway, the, a play you run sometimes uh, at the end of a game, and Scotty Burge got the ball back wide open for a, a three, and he won that game. And I was so happy to see him get that big moment near the end of his career because he really he earned it. That was a big moment for him. Yeah, he did earn it. You know, as soon as that ball was swung to him or kicked back, you know, you knew it was going in. And the best part about it is when he hit it, he was the only guy that was still in the play <laughs> yeah. trying to make sure we could stop, including the coaches. I mean, I think it was kind of pandemonium. And, um, yeah. you know, he was the only guy that it was still locked in. And, you know, we ended up, there was half a second to go or whatever. But that's just him. Uh, he's a big shot guy. But if you did his percentages in the last minute of a game, they're significantly higher than, than what he shot for his career. And then if you look at that tape of the Hope game where uh, Kellen Gehrig, another guy who just brought all kinds of energy to the program, he hit that runner against Hope. Scotty Burge was the guy who got in front of the – I mean, there was two seconds left. I mean, er, a lot of people were jumping up and down, but he got in front of the the uh, guard that got the inbound pass and blocked his throw. Yeah, I mean, that's just him to a T. He did it over and over in his career. And, yeah, I mean, I, I would say, too, that, that that's going to be a piece we're really going to miss this year. and. We're just hopeful that that legacy that he left is, you know, still living on with with kind of the new guys and our young guys that we have taken over now. You're uh, you're losing six seniors this season. Uh, we could probably spend the whole show talking about the seniors, but coaches hate when I state the obvious. But you know, I mean, you got some big big holes to fill, uh, and you're going to do it with some uh, transfers, and uh, you brought a few other other guys in, and then you're hoping for more minutes from you know, some existing guys, you know, let's start with who you got coming back. Uh, you got, uh, you know, Keegan Shivers, he averaged 10 points, uh, five rebounds. He's had a full season now on the road in the Cascade Conference with fans. Uh, what do you look for from Keegan this year? Well, the, the touch on the holes we, we got to fill, we thought we were going to have to fill those holes a year ago. Um, and then our, our seniors decided to come back for that sixth year. So I really felt that a year ago that <clears throat> our guys could step up and fill those holes and we could be a good basketball team. But they got one more year to prepare, and I think that was a, a positive. And I think Keegan is a guy that, that benefited you know pretty heavily from that. He had a good spring, spring season when we played um, you know those eight games. And then last year, Really took it to another notch and you know hit some huge huge shots for us. Had some had some really big games, but you know he's our guy this year and he'll be a captain on this team as a sophomore. Um, one of our one of our captains and Keegan's just a big shot kid. I mean, every time you need a big one, he hits it. He's a tremendous energy giver. And another thing is we have Mitchell Fink now back here helping us out as an assistant coach. And I mean, he lives in the gym with with Mitch. And I think the one thing that Keegan wanted to get better at is creating his own shot which I think he struggled with. And right. there's nobody better to work on creating your own shot than, than Mitchell Fink. And I think that'll probably be the biggest piece of his game this year that he's in, that he's improved on is just being able to create his own shot, not relying on you know a defense collapsing or relocating or something like that. Now, one of the big pieces, uh, Coach, you have coming back, Kyson Faust, just an uh, elite defender, a uh, guy who can uh, take a couple dribbles into the paint, elevate, get a shot. Uh, He's he's going to be really important to this team. He's strong, fast. He was a uh, uh, 6A long jump champion in the state of Oregon. He was sixth place in the 100-meter dash. So uh, he's a pretty athletic guy. He is. And he's another guy similar to Scotty Burge who just impacts winning. And, you know, and that's why he gets so much time on the floor. And, you know, he hasn't been a great shooter in his career. It's something he's, he's worked on a lot this summer. But. Just a guy, and he's going to defend the same guy every day. You're going to get the same thing from him. He shoots a really high percentage around the rim. He's a really, really good leader. You know, he's probably our most serious guy. You know, I think they call him dad or grandpa. He's a little bit older, but, 
he's just so serious and it's so important to him to win. And, and you see that every day from him. And he's a guy that it, when he graduates, that will be a big void just because he does so much on the floor. He's defensive player of the year last year, you know, was up there in the conference and in offensive rebounds per game. He just does so many things for us that, that a lot of guys <clears throat> just, just won't do or can't do. Yeah, I was talking to Chuck the other day, and I, we both agreed that Faust will probably play 38 minutes a game. I mean, he's so well, I, valuable, it's hard to get him off the court. I'd love to play him 30 minutes a game. I just, you know, with how hard he plays, I'm not sure he, he, can, he can play that many minutes. We might, you know, yeah. we well, might wear him down if we do that. That wasn't coaching advice, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, don't take any coaching advice from me. Uh, let's talk about the backcourt, a place you, you struggled a little bit last season. Uh mainly with the shooting and, you know, just kind of getting the play started. Uh, you, you had young guards, first time through the conference with fans. Uh, you've got a uh, couple guys that are very, very skilled, uh, Jameson Guerrero and then uh, Cam Osborne. They're coming back, and then you uh, recruited a young guy out of uh, Chico also, a freshman. So what do you look for from the backcourt? You know, I think they did about as good a job as they could last year as freshmen. It's hard to win in this league with a freshman point guard just because it's such a vital position to what we do. And, you know, we just relied so heavily on, on them. And that necess- that wasn't necessarily fair, but it's, you know, it's the way it was. And Jamison had a, had a really good year last year, I thought. A uh, really good passer, you know, tremendous game manager. You know, he'll, he'll be better this year just based on being older and more experienced. And then Cam Osborne's a guy that going into last year was our, was our starting point guard and had a really good exhibition game against the Seattle Mountaineers and rolled his ankle pretty bad. You know, one of, the, one of the more severe ones I've seen. So that really hurt him and set him back. And then right when he got back, he broke his hand and, and that set him back. And we got back from breaking his hand. He got COVID. So then he was out 10 days and he was just never able to catch his breath and, and get his feet under him. But Cam is a, Cam is a special talent. One of, he's one of our best pure shooters. He's a, you know, extremely skilled and I would, expect cam to make a huge jump this year we felt because he redshirted and then we had the covid year and then last year so this is actually his fourth year as a sophomore and cam just the cards he wasn't dealt very good cards to start his career just based on a couple different things and he's battled he has battled through it and the best is yet to come for him he's we expect him to be you know big time impact player this year you know, one thing about, I've talked to you about it before, but man, he, he gets, he has one of the quickest shots I've ever seen. Uh, guys, you know, he doesn't need hardly any space to get his shot off. No, he doesn't. He can create, and he's a, he's a really skilled passer. You know, I just think that this is, this is his year. This is his breakout year. And as far as skilled scores, I think he's as good as there is in the league. Um, we haven't seen it yet, just based on some circumstances out of his control, but he's worked his tail off all summer. He stayed here worked our camps, was in the gym all summer, got his body in a really, really good spot. So he's ready to go. He's had a great start to practice. And, you know, if he can, you know, stay out of, stay healthy, uh, he, he's a force to be reckoned with. And then coach, uh, another guy who's become an old hand in the backcourt for the Owls, uh, hasn't got a ton of playing time, but Kyle Hadwick. Kyle, you know, a kid from Henley High School here locally in Klamath Falls. You know, when he got here, I wasn't sure if, you know, if he'd turn into a player, but we really liked him and we thought he competed and he he's just gotten a little bit better every year. And I think this year you talk about guys that compete, run the system, you know, do exactly what we want to do, what, what we want them to do. And that's, and that's Kyle. He, he's a great cutter early on in his career. He wasn't a great offensive player. So we talked to him about, you know, what can you do that can help us uh, impact winning? And he turned into a rebounder at six foot. He's really good in the motion offense, cutting away from the ball. Uh, as a pest defensively, and then now his skills are starting to catch up. And he's a guy that has paid his dues, and you know, by no means is he a, you know, a 30-minute player, but he's going to play some minutes for us, and he will come in and impact winning. I can guarantee that. He, he's a special kid, and I think as a coach, there's nothing more rewarding than watching a player pay his dues and do everything right and then finally get his chance, and I'm hopeful for that for Kyle this year. Yeah, he's definitely been a tech guy. He does everything he can for the team. So, you know, hopefully that'll he'll be able to, uh, you know, contribute just a bit more on the floor this season. Yeah, yeah, that would make us, uh, make coach staff pretty happy. And then coach, another returner, had some uh, some good minutes last season. Eric Frazier, 
Uh, he's a strong athlete, good shooter. What do you see from him? Frazier's a stud. Um, he was good enough to play last year. He's one of those guys we, we felt before our seniors decided to come back that, that he was ready to go. And, you know, he, he was just behind Kellen Gehrig and Harrison Steiger last year where two pretty seasoned vets. But every time Frazier came in, he did something. You know, whether mm-hmm. he was just going to come in and be aggressive. And he is one of our most skilled players on the roster. He can really shoot. Um, tremendous competitor. So, you know, Eric's a kid that we expect him to start this year. And he might have been the best player in the league that didn't play last year. And I know <laughs> that is, you know, narrow-minded for me to think because I'm only to think about our team. But, I mean, he's a heck of a player that was giving it to guys in practice last year. And he waited his turn. And, and I think this year, is, is, I mean, he's going to break out. Three things I really like about Eric Frazier. Number one, he's always got a smile on his face. Always. And number two, he's uh, got a very quick shot. I mean, he gets up high, elevates high, and, you know, he pops the three from very quick. And the third thing is he is not afraid to go to the rim. No. Uh, you're right. He always has a smile on his face. He's a great kid. Quick shot, high release. And, and you're right. He is absolutely fearless. He'll put his body out there. You'll see him hit. He'll probably be on the floor more than <laughs> more than anybody. And I mean, he's very, whether it's in practice, game, open gym. I mean, he's playing like he's playing in the national championship game. And I'm I'm really excited for our fans to see to see Eric come out and and get the minutes that I think that I think he deserves and he's earned. And I know freshmen right out of high school are uh, the ultimate crapshoot. Uh, you got Noah Thomas out of Chico. You you do you think you might get some minutes out of him this season? Oh yeah, uh, Noah. No one can play. And, you know, the, the trouble with, with freshmen is, you know, they, they have to get up to speed with what you do and how they can impact winning in your program. And at the same time, they're a little bit behind everybody else just because they're, they're young, whether it's skill, shooting, learning to compete, and those type of things. The best part about Noah is he's got the competing part figured out. Uh, he can really compete and guard. He can shoot. And I think the key for Noah will just be how does he translate his game into what we do? And how can we get him to do things that impact winning for our program? Right. But Noah's a kid that, that we won't redshirt, and he's going to come right in, and, and he's going to impact the game for us. He, and I think down the road, as he becomes a more polished player, you know, he, he's going to be a star here. You went out and got a couple of transfers, tried to bring some experience in. Uh, Jay Elmore out of Lane Community, and then Cody Bauman, he played at uh, Shasta. Or no, College of the Siskiyous. Yep, yep. Talk about those transfers you brought in. Well, Cody, Cody's a, um, a tough matchup because he's 6'7". He can shoot. He can pass. He's a great skilled passer. He's a good shot blocker, but he's also extremely effective on the block. And he, he's a guy that we, we expect him to have a huge impact for us. Um, you know, back to the basket-wise, he's probably as good as we have as a scorer. Um, and I think where, you know, it's always hard when you're coming into a program, you're trying to fit in, where, you know, where, where do I stand in the offense? And that's going to take some, some time for Cody to get him there. But as far as being able to score the basketball, I mean, he's deadly. And as soon as he kind of figures out, cause he's played inside, you know, his whole career and we're going to have him playing on the perimeter and, and slipping inside. Uh, he's, he's tough. And we, we expect him to, to play a lot, a lot for us. And then Jay Elmore transfer from lane, He's a sophomore. He's actually the same age as Kyson Faust, who's in his fifth year. Jay had some injuries and COVID where they didn't get to play. So Jay's a sophomore, and, I mean, he's he just hit the ground running. He, he's a good defensive player. He's extremely – he's been really well coached um, by now the Southern Oregon coach, Matt Zosel. So you can tell Jay, Jay's been well coached. But where, where he makes his impact is he – I mean, he's an absolute pure shooter, and he doesn't need any time. And he's – I think sometimes you got guys who can really shoot the ball – and they're and they're effective, but it's very rare that you have guys that can come off pin downs or staggers and that can fire and and have their feet under them. And Jay's one of those guys where we haven't had a guy like that in a while that you can just run off anything and he can just pop one. And and that's pretty fun for us as we can design some stuff for him. And so he'll be I mean he'll be an immediate impact this year. You lose Garrett Albright. I mean, just absolutely huge in the middle, like you said uh, for years and years. I mean he was he was the man in the middle. Uh, so you've got uh, Joey Potts coming back. You uh, got how do you say Logan's last name? Thubay. Well, you know Logan's pretty quiet, so we've been trying to get it out of him, and I'm not quite sure, but I think it's <laughs> Thubay. You know what? We'll just start calling him whatever we want, and then make him correct. That's, that's my that's my approach. Yeah. Um, and then you got yeah, uh, 
you, I'm sorry. You got uh, uh, the other kid from Sherwood. No, that's Blake Jensen. So Thank you. We feel really good about our, our inside game. You know, Joey Potts could not be any more different than, than Garrett Albright. Um, they're just a different player. But, I mean, Joey Potts, 6'10", can run like a gazelle, jumps out of the gym. He's ready to have a, have a huge year. And I think last year he was handicapped just because he was behind, you know, Garrett, who was, you know, a three-time all-conference player. But, you know, down the stretch, Joey just got better and better. And he can play a lot of minutes um, as a big kid just because he's, you know, got such a good motor. And Joey might be the surprise of, in, in our opinion, the surprise of the league just because of how many things he can do. He can shoot a little bit now, which which is a, you know, big key for if you anytime you have a big that, could pop to the perimeter. I just think it puts so much pressure on the defense. So, you know, we feel really good about Joey. And then Blake Jensen, who is a sophomore, played sparingly last year, but I mean, he's an energizer bunny. Uh, he's got a great body at six seven, really strong. And he just keeps getting better and better and better. And we expect him to play a lot of minutes this year as well. And then Logan, our freshman from Wilsonville, is going to be a great player. He's going to redshirt this year. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, just because I think time will be limited just because Potts and, you know, Jensen are playing so many minutes. So, yeah, Lo- Logan Redshirt. And then the other guy we have, he's a, he's a senior, is Jesse Higgins at 6'10". And he has not played a lot in his career, but it wouldn't surprise me one bit if he finds his way to the floor this year. You know, Justin, every time he's gotten minutes, he does something. Every time. Yep. Whether it's a block or scores or – and he's he's long. He's tall, but he's long. Uh, he, he's, he can uh, – Anyway, he can take up a lot of space in the paint. He's been a great teammate, and he's worked his tail off for a lot, uh, you know, several years. Yes, he's an Oregon Tech guy, and it, nothing would make me happier than if he he finds the floor this year. Let's talk about the schedule. I don't know. Were you drunk the night you made your schedule? I mean, Mike. Okay, <laughs> I hope not. But you know, <laughs> um, we we just looked at it as, and this is it's twofold. Okay, I'm on the national selection committee for the NAIA. And I mean, RPI strength of schedule is such a huge piece. And I love it because the way of scheduling in the past for the NAIA, you know, you're going to schedule a, at least an eight and two preseason. And if you can be 22 and eight, 21 and nine, 20 and 10, you're going to get in. And mostly you're going to get in based on your reputation and your record. And I just never liked that because if you play five, you know, no brainer cupcake games each season, that's 20 games for a kid in his career that if he is, you know, a starter who plays 30 minutes, that, that he really doesn't have to show up. And that doesn't that never sat well with me. And I think now that there's an RPI and a strength of schedule and all that, the indexes, it creates an avenue for coaches to really go out and pick up some good games. And the other part of that is the worst thing you can do for your team is when you start conference play, not know who you are, what you're not very good at. Yeah. And so that was what we wanted to do, especially with a younger team. Uh, we wanted to figure out exactly who we were right away. You know, so we're going to play Jessup at home, who's a top five team. And then we're going to go out on the road and play Indiana Wesleyan and Grace, who will be close to that top five. Yeah. And then Bethel, you know, we have a long history with Bethel. So right off the bat, we wanted to, to know who we are because in that first conference weekend, we go to Eastern Oregon and Sea of Ein, and we don't have, want to have any question marks. Yeah, so the just, just to kind of reiterate, so you won out of the, those first eight games, you go on the road, or you play at home and then you on the road. You so you'll play uh, four potential, you know, top well three potential top ten teams, probably a top twenty. Anyways, some of the toughest teams in the country. Then you have to go down to Simpson, which is no cakewalk, and then you make nope. the toughest road trip in the Cascade Conference. Uh, first uh, second of December, you go to Eastern, and then we go to College Idaho. You definitely you definitely will get exposed. Whatever your weaknesses are, you're going to know uh, on October thirtieth. I mean, yeah, I, I you're not going to have to sit around and wait and find out. No, and I hope we do know right away because, you know, that's that's what it's all about. And these players, I mean, if you're playing college basketball, you should want to compete. And, you know, we want to go out and compete against the best, figure out what we do really well and who we are and create that identity. So, you know, when we get going in the cascade, we're, we're prepared. I think similar last year, our, scr- our schedule was really good last year, not quite as good as it is this year. And we stumbled out of the gates, and then we hit conference play, and we won 12 straight. That's true. And I just think that that was a huge positive for us. And, you know, when we got into the – we had an automatic bid for being second in the Cascade. But 
we would have got in as an at large just because our strength of schedule and our RPI was was a respectable number. And fans in Klamath Falls, uh, you need to get your season tickets. They're on sale now, uh, but you definitely uh, need to be looking. Number one, you should try to get out to Indiana because watching the Owls play in Lucky Arena and down at Grace College, you're going to play Bethel and Grace, uh, teams that Oregon Tech has uh, played in the national tournament. Bethel beat Oregon Tech in 98. Uh, uh, in the in the championship game, so there's long history between these teams. But next season, they're coming out to climb a fall, so you need to uh, mark that ahead on your calendar because you need to really come out and support these teams coming out from Indiana. I don't know who let who talked you into going out to Indiana and playing, but uh, yeah, I don't know who that was, but <laughs> no, it'll be, be it'll, <laughs> it'll be trust me, it'll be it'll be fun. But uh, yeah, yeah, I think you know what a, I I I've never really. You know, the non-conference was so important before, and it's important now, but I, I, we obviously want to win. But my focus in the preseason is not about wins and losses. It's about finding out who we are, and we're we're going to be forced to do that. It'll be a good trip for the guys, too, I mean, to get out there. And then Northwest Christian, sorry, Bushnell is going to uh, go out with you as well. In my opinion, it's the toughest preseason schedule, Oregon Tech. I mean, yeah, I followed it 50-something years. Oregon Tech has never had a preseason schedule this tough. And But you look at, like, Southern's bringing out Huntington. They're bringing up William Jessup. Uh, Jamestown is going down to, uh, where is it, the show, and they're playing William Jessup. And William Jessup's going to play Jamestown and Bethel. Uh, everybody is going Everybody is going and playing very, very tough preseason because of those reasons you talked about. It's going to be a great season. It is. I'm, I'm excited to see the way everybody's scheduling now. And I think that was the purpose of – of going to the RPI strength schedule, not only to to get the right teams in the tournament, but now now people are afraid to go out and I say lose games. I mean you're you're trying to win them, but you know uh, a good loss is not going to hurt you this year. Well, Justin, it sounds like it's going to be a exciting season. Appreciate you taking the time to walk through the roster. I know there's a few guys we didn't get to, but uh, you you've got a good mixture of guys coming back. You got some transfers, some freshmen that looks like they might get some minutes. Uh, how excited are you? I am. Uh, I really enjoyed this summer just because the last two years have been so long with everything that everybody had to deal with across the country. This summer is really good to get away, spend time with family and kind of recharge. And, you know, I'm excited every year we go into the season. I got, you know, when you're a head basketball coach in college, you you have a wonderful job and, you know, going out and getting better, putting the puzzle together with these young men, it's what it's all about. So, if you're not excited right now, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> well, that's Justin Parnell. He's head men's basketball coach at uh, Oregon Tech. Justin, thank you so much for uh, taking the time. You bet. Thank you, Bill. Hey, thank you so much to Justin Parnell, uh, Hustlin' Owl Basketball. Uh, October's here. The end of this month, October 29th, I'm going to Klamath Falls and basketball starts. I'm so excited. You need to check the schedule of the schools around you. Get out and watch some NAI basketball. It's great basketball. You're going to have the time of your life. And it won't break the bank because NAI basketball is the best entertainment value in America.